Namaste everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about four techniques to read the D60 chart, which is popularly uh, to read the Sastyamsha chart, which is uh, popularly known as D60. Just to give you a small intro, that is a D60 chart in Parashari astrology, in the stream of astrology that is uh, researched, developed, and propagated by Parashar is considered to be one of the most important divisional charts. Right, and it is actually one of the most important divisional charts. Right, so without wasting any of our time, let's quickly jump to the video. But before that, I will want to uh, let you people know about something. That is, I already have an article on D60. And in this video, we are going to talk about the DTs of D60. Though I have done a YouTube series elaborating the DTs of D60 as well. That is yet to be completed. And I also have an article on the DTs of D60. That is by the name of D60 Sashtiyamsh Devata, as you can see. I will put the description of, I will put the link of this article in description. And also, if you just search D60 Sastiyamsha uh, Shubhamalo, if you search it over Google, you can get this article. This name D60 Sastiyamsha Devata. Along with this, I also have many more articles which are elaborate, extensive, contains many research techniques. So don't forget to check all the articles in the blog section of my website. That is www.shubhamalo.com. So first of all, the thing that you have to uh, understand is there, there are two tables in this particular article. One is the table of the DT of the D60. The name of the DT of the D60. If uh, what are the degree of the, what will be the degree of the planet when they fall in this particular D60 that you can barely ignore the remarks of the d60 that is written here right b means benefic sorry b means bad and g means good m means malefic so ghora the first d60 ghora is bad second d60 rakshas is bad third d60 deva is good fourth d60 kubera is good fifth d60 yaksh is Malefic, 6th D60 Kinder is Malefic, 7th D60 Brust is Malefic, 8th D60 Kulagn is bad, Garal is Malefic, Agni is Malefic, Maya is bad, Purish is bad, Apampati is good, Marut is uh, Malefic, Kal is bad, Sarth is bad, but Amrit D60 is good, Indu D60 is good, Urdu D60 is good, Komal D60 is Malefic, Heram is good, Brahma is good, Vishnu is Vishnu Mahesh Deva. This this is M. That means malefic, but the result is not just bad or good. Right? So the result rather depends on the planet occupying the D60. And to differentiate in that result, there is another list in the same article below it where I have put the remarks, bad, bad, good, 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 neutral, bad, 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 good, 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 neutral, right? And put the meaning of that particular D60 also, right? So there is a particular differentiation between the good and bad that is given in the first table and that is given in the second table. The first table is according to an astrological classic, whereas the second table is according to my experience. So I will strongly recommend you to go with my experience, take my remarks that is good or bad, the name of the DT. And what this D60 or Sastiyamsha actually means, right? So Ghora, the first Sastiyamsha means terrible. Rakshasa, the second Sastiyamsha means demon. Deva, the third Sastiyamsha means God and so on and so forth. So this list is up to all the 60 Sastiyamshas, right? The first technique is first, first of all, what you need to remember is that 
primarily in D60, you see the planets as the Lord of houses. And you don't see the house lordship of the D60 chart, but you check the house lordship of the D1 chart, right? In any divisional chart, whenever you want to judge a planet as a particular house lord, the lordship of houses should always be according to the natal chart, birth chart, or Rashi chart, right? So when you are going to analyze the seventh lord, don't take the seventh lord of D60, but take the seventh lord of the D1 chart. The first technique is planet being placed in a good or bad Shashti Amsha or under the ruler. When, when I say good or bad Shashti Amsha, it means good or bad Shashti Amsha Lord, good or bad Shashti Amsha Diti, right? So you check the planet, whichever you want to check. If you want to check marriage, see the seventh Lord of the Diva chart. If you want to face, if you want to see uh, progeny, check the fifth Lord of the Diva chart in D60 and you have to find which DT is lording this particular D60. So let's take an example. I will be using this particular horoscope. When you open Jagannath Hora, the horoscope is like this. You have to go to this Amsa rulers, click here. And then you have to select Sasti Amsha. That gives you the Amsa rulers of Sasti Amsha. If you want to refer to the table, follow this index. So Lagna falls in Payodhi Amsha. The ascendant falls in Payodhi Amsha, which is the 58th number of D60 in the index. So you go to the article and you find 58 is bad. That is Payodhi Amsha. That indicates C, too much water in a negative sense, right? Water indicates emotions. And with this analysis, we understand that this person is very emotional, which is not working positively for him, but in a stead is working negatively for him. If I have to check the fifth lord, I will check the... Uh, Planet Jupiter, because Jupiter lords the fifth house in the D1 chart of the person, the person being born in Scorpio Lagna, the fifth house is Pisces, which is ruled by Jupiter. When we check Jupiter, Jupiter is in Sudha Amsha, which is 37 in 37th number in the index. So you go to 37. This is good Sudha Amsha, which indicates nectar, honey, or water. Right? But one thing you have to remember, and I think generally people forget it. Whatever I am presenting you in this video or any of the video is just one of the techniques, right? It is, and you cannot make a conclusion based on a single technique only. You have to holistically analyze a chart, right? You have to holistically read a horoscope, right? And the holistic method of teaching uh, is taught in courses and webinars and is not generally cannot be told in videos, right? So you have to do a holistic analysis. But here, this is a very important, uh, you know, this is a very important, uh, like what to say, this is a very important thing, which uh, highlights the importance of D60. So if you go to the D1 chart, if you just check the D1 chart, just do a normal analysis of the fifth house, you find that there is Ketu in the fifth house that is bad. And the fifth house is under the aspect of sun that is also bad. The fifth lord is Jupiter, though it is good by being exalted in the ninth house, but there are afflictions over the fifth house, right? Certainly there are many afflictions over the fifth house. Here comes the role of the Sasti Amsha B60, where we find Jupiter getting under the getting under the rulership of Sudha. That is a benefit D60 Lord, which gave progeny to the child, which gave progeny to the person. It was difficult to produce a child. They uh, he went for an IVF and it was successful as well. If we want to check the marital life, we have to check the seventh lord. That seventh lord is Venus. And we see that in D60, Venus goes under the rulership of 56th. Uh, uh, Venus goes into the 56th Shashti Amisha, that is Ati Sitaka. 
you go to the article to find that the 56th sasti amsha that is ati sital is bad which means very cold in a negative sense telling me that his marital life is not good once again highlighting the importance of sasti amsha or the d60 chart if you just normally analyze the seventh house of the horoscope you can be confused as you see the seventh lord venus goes to the 12th house that is a bad house and is conjoined by mars a malefic but is also conjoined by mercury who is a benefic as well and in the 12th house venus is also in his own rashi so there are two negative factors going to the 12th house and conjoined by mars and two positive factors conjoined by friend mercury and being in his own rashi so in this condition of uh, uh, confusion at this situation where we can be confused the d60 chart comes to our rescue and looking at the d60 lord which is ati sital and referring to my website which tells it is very cold and negative we can conclude that the marital life of the person is not good or happy right so just saying that the sasti amsha have a predominant influence the result of sasti amsha is predominant and in the case of confusion you can resort to d60 or sasti amsha lordship of planets sasti amsha lordship of these over planets and then can get a result but even after doing this you certainly cannot ignore other charts other 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 divisional charts and the basic horoscope so we found that okay this venus goes to ati sital amsha the 56th sasti amsha that is supposed to be bad but what type of bad result will be there right so for that we go back to the d1 chart to check that the seventh lord venus is in the 12th house which uh, translates into separation from spouse and is conjoined with mars which leads to fights in marriage as mars is the karaka for fight or the significator of fight and venus is further conjoined mercury also who is the eighth lord eighth house indicating divorce also indicating that divorce is also a bad result of marriage for this particular horoscope right so this is the first technique that any planet that you want to analyze and for this matter see the planets or judge the planets as the house lords any planet you want to analyze you just go open the horoscope and find in which number d60 this planet is falling in who is the dt of that d60 refer to my article and check if that d60 is good or bad if the d60 is good that's okay if the d60 is not good if the d60 lord is not good then it is bad coming to the second aspect of it the same technique can be applied to dasha analysis also you should check the dasha and dantar dasha lord which d60 they are falling in which dt is lording that d60 and if the lord of the d60 of the planet whose dasha antar dasha is running is benefic the dasha antar dasha is good otherwise the dasha antar dasha is not that good for an example and this is only for the sake of exemplification uh those who know me know it very well that i don't always use the vimshottri dasha however for the sake of exemplification if we look at the vimshottri dasha for this person we find that this person currently is under saturn mahadasha and ketu antar dasha now we once again go back to the table to find that saturn is in the 31st sasti amsha which means mrityu mrityu literally means death and when you go to the table again you find 31st sasti amsha mrityu as being bad the antar dasha lord is ketu which is going under ati sitak amsha ati sitak sasti amsha which is the 56th sasti amsha which we have already seen in the case of venus that it is bad so mahadasha lord and antar dasha lord both in d60 are lorded by a bad planet which translates into the current dasha antar dasha being bad for the person you can do the same thing for the pratyantar dasha lord as well now the equation is pretty simple if the mahadasha lord and antar dasha lord both are into a good sasti amsha the results are very good if the mahadasha lord and antar dasha lord both goes under a bad sasti amsha the result is bad 
However, if the Mahadasha Lord is in a good Sasti Amsha and Antardasha Lord is in a bad Sasti Amsha, or if the Antardasha Lord is in a good Sasti Amsha and Antardasha Lord is in the bad Sasti Amsha, in that scenario, how will you conclude the result? So the result of the Dasha Lord is predominant and the result of the Antardasha Lord is not that predominant. So when the Mahadasha Lord is benefic as per Sustiyamsha and Antardasha Lord is malefic as per Sustiyamsha, the Dasha is generally benefic, the Dasha is generally good, only few bad results come in between. Whereas if the Mahadasha Lord is in a bad Sustiyamsha and Antardasha Lord is in a good Sustiyamsha, then though the overall Dasha is bad, but some good results come in between because of the Antardasha Lord getting under the rulership of Good Sashti Amsha. What good result can come and what bad result can come can be differentiated, can, can be easily differentiated with this understanding that Mahadasha is a long period and Antardasha is a short period. So any good or bad result indicated by the Antardasha Lord, which is opposite to the result indicated by the Mahadasha Lord can only be short-lived. It can only indicate short good things or short-lived bad results. Short-lived good result or short-lived bad result. But this is to be done only in that case when the result of the Antardasha Lord is not matching with the result of the Mahadasha Lord. If the result of the Mahadasha Lord and the result of the Antardasha Lord is same, then there is no need to uh, think about this particular topic. Now, <clears throat> Coming to the third technique, the first was related to the Bhava analysis and the second was related to the Dasha analysis that we have just covered. Coming to the third thing, you know, I, I'm just going to share one of my most favorite researches. And I haven't, uh, I think I haven't disclosed it after 2015. In 2015, to a small group of students, I told it. But after that, we're talking about it for the first time. So the technique is pretty simple. D60 also indicates the karma, is what you can say. So as a pretty simple case, first, first of all, I will tell you the technique. Then I will tell you the result. Let's take the seventh law. First of all, you have to check, take the seventh lord of D1 chart in, D, in D60. If this seventh lord of D1 chart is affected by a planet, in that planet, check which Rashi that aspecting planet is situated in and who is that aspecting planet. For an example, For an example, in a horoscope, say Mars is the seventh lord. And in D60, he is aspected by Jupiter, in, which is in Taurus. So the spouse will have their Jupiter in Taurus. Or will be born with him Taurus Ascendant or Taurus Rashi. Right? Is this point very clear? I should take an example. Continuing with the same example that we have seen. In this chart, seventh Lord is Venus which is situated in Taurus. And this Venus, I'm looking at the D60 chart, not the D60 Lord. Let's be very clear about it. Situ Venus, the seventh Lord of the D1 chart is in Taurus and is aspected by fifth aspect of Rahu. That translates into that the spouse of the person will also have Rahu in Taurus, sorry, uh, the spouse of the person will also have Rahu in Capricorn, either in Rashi or Navamsha, point one. 
or the spouse will be born in capricorn ascendant in d1 or capricorn ascendant in d9 or is supposed to have moon in capricorn in d1 or moon in capricorn in d9 and another thing is because the seventh lord is situated in taurus for this person in d60 in the horoscope of the spouse of this person the sign taurus should be very prominent to give you a live real life example let's go to the horoscope of bill gates i take gemini lagna gemini ascendant for bill gates the seventh lord will be jupiter and in the d60 we see that his jupiter is situated in pisces and is aspected by rahu from scorpio so the spouse of bill gates that is melinda gates should have pisces very prominent in her horoscope because the seventh lord of bill gates in d60 is situated in pisces and melinda gates should also have rahu in scorpio rashi or rahu in scorpio navamsha because in the horoscope of bill gates rahu is influencing the seventh lord of d1 jar jupiter through while being situated in scorpio the ascendant of the of melinda gates is not known to me we have a rough horoscope for melinda gates right so i have written birth time unknown now if you see the horoscope of melinda gates according to the technique as i have told you she had her rahu in uh, in the horos in the d60 of bill gates the seventh lord venus was as sorry the seventh in the horoscope of bill gates extremely sorry in the horoscope of bill gates the seventh lord jupiter was aspected by rahu from scorpio in d60 in the horoscope of melinda gates she is having her moon in scorpio right in the horoscope of bill gates jupiter was being aspected by rahu from scorpio in d60 melinda gates is having moon in scorpio and also in navamsha melinda gates is having rahu in scorpio right so the basic point is you check the d uh, you check the seventh house lord of d1 chart in d60 and the planets influencing the seventh lord in d60 whichever planet is influencing the seventh lord in d60 the partner should have that planet in the same rashi or navamsha point one or the ascendant or moon of the spouse in either d1 or d9 should have the connection with the rashi where the seventh lord is situated Uh, where the seventh lord is situated in the d60 of the partner or in that rashi from where the influencing planet in d60 is influencing from through the horoscope of the spouse taking one more i will take one more example of father and child for that we have to see the fifth lord of the person who is father or mother for female horoscope ninth house and the ninth lord indicates the child whereas for the male horoscope fifth house and the fifth lord indicate the child in this horoscope the fifth lord is jupiter who is situated in capricorn in d60 so the child should have capricorn lagna or moon in capricorn in either d1 or d9 point 1 this jupiter is under the 12th aspect of rahu from aquarius in the d60 chart so the child should have aquarius ascendant or aquarius moon in d1 or d9 or should have rahu same plan because rahu is aspecting the seventh lord jupiter so the uh, child should have rahu in aquarius in either d1 or d9 in the horoscope of the child we are looking for capricorn and aquarius this is the child of the native 
and you see that his child in navamsha is exactly having rahu in aquarius right i am very clear about it in the horoscope of the mother of this child and for the female horoscope you have to see the ninth lord so in the horoscope of the mother of this child the 10th lord saturn is situated in aquarius getting aspected by rahu and if you remember in the child's chart rahu was in aquarius navamsha so this tells you uh, out of many horoscopes that are presented in front of you who can be the mother father child spouse of the person and two this indicates the karmic connection between people right this indicates the karmic connection between people right so for an example coming to the horoscope of bill gates and melinda gates bill gates is having his seventh lord jupiter in pisces aspected by rahu from scorpio in the horoscope of melinda gates rahu is in scorpio navamsha scorpio indicate hidden things and yeah scorpio indicate hidden things and in the d1 chart melinda gates is having moon debilitated in scorpio see check take your horoscope check the d60 lord d60 rashi where the seventh lord is situated in and if any planet is aspecting that seventh lord in d60 also also take the rashi from where that planet is aspecting the seventh lord in d60 check both of these rashis in the horoscope of your spouse father mother child or any one and that tells you the connection the karmic connection between the relationship within the relationship for an example in the horoscope of bill gates and melinda gates as we have already seen in the horoscope of bill gates seventh lord uh, jupiter is situated in pisces navamsha aspected by rahu from scorpio in the horoscope of melinda gates there is no planet in pisces rashi there is sun in pisces navamsha and in scorpio rashi there is moon and in scorpio navamsha there is rahu so there is the karma of sun rahu and a debilitated moon in their relationship the karma of sun resulted in that after marrying melinda gates bill gates reached to new heights power position etc in his profession rahu in scorpio indicates what is the result of rahu in scorpio he did many transformative life altering researches and is also very deeply into philanthropy and giving resources to those people who cannot reach to the resources he have done uh, you know the polio eradication in south africa and all these things he have done which is indicated by rahu in scorpio and rahu is the uh, rahu indicates the work which no one else can do and scorpio indicates doing it for those people who are hidden or who are not having access to the resources and uh, because this is the karmic connection between uh, bill and melinda bill gates did all this philanthropy through bill and melinda gates foundation only but in the end there is a debilitated moon in scorpio that tells me that a part of the karma between the couple is also the debilitation of moon the mental i will not use the word the mental problem torture harassment melinda gates must have gone through while uh, after she found out the this particular thing related to bill gates which led uh, to their divorce is indicated by the debilitated moon in scorpio 
right so these are the four things related to d60 that i want to talk about how to analyze the result of a house lord and the result of the dashantar dasha lord using the dt's of d60 and how to decide the karmic connection between uh, mother father parent child siblings and etc and also how to find the connecting karma between the horoscopes of two people taking one more quick example in the horoscope of ram krishna paramahans the fifth lord jupiter Uh, so the fifth lord mercury is in gemini navamsha not aspected by any planet the fifth house also indicates followers or shishya and the ninth house lord which indicates guru also the ninth house lord venus is in cancer d60 once again uh, uh, having the 12th aspect of rahu from leo right and the lagna lord saturn is in the sign of cancer so let me write a note uh, for the ease of remembrance fifth lord mercury in Gemini D sixty, ninth Lord Venus in Cancer D six D sixty, aspected by Rahu from Leo. Lagna Lord Saturn in Scorpio D sixty, aspected by Mars from Leo. right these are the three things happening in the horoscope of ramkrishna paramahans now going to the horoscope of swami vivekanand which i take to be of a capricorn lagna we find that in jaimini rashi there is no planet in cancer rashi there is no planet in leo there is no planet but in scorpio there is rahu in the d1 chart rahu indicate foreign travels also and rahu in scorpio specifically indicates foreign travels as we have seen in the horoscope of melinda gates also right uh, he uh, bill gates helped the people of uh, africa uh, to fight uh, from uh, polio right but uh, bill gates is not an african he is an american right so helping people crossing the international boundaries is what happened right so swami vivekananda having uh, rahu in scorpio uh, the sign where uh, ramkrishna paramahansa is having his lagna lord in d60 indicates that it was the karma pending karma of swami vivekanand to thakur ramkrishna paramahansa that swami vivekanand have to go to the foreign lands and expand preach and educate people about the teachings of ramakrishna paramahansa going to navamsha in gemini navamsha there is moon for the horoscope of ramakrishna paramahansa the fifth lord in d60 was in fifth lord mercury in d60 was in gemini navamsha and swami vivekananda ji is having moon in gemini navamsha indicating that by his mind mentally swami vivekananda will be, swami vivekananda have a karma of mentally surrendering himself to ramkrishna paramahansa which resulted in their guru shishya relationship in the sign cancer there is ketu and if you remember swami ramkrishna paramahansa had his ninth lord venus in cancer d60 swami vivekananda is having uh, ketu in cancer indicating that swami vivekananda is to inherit the spirituality and spiritual thoughts of ramkrishna paramahansa from him right ketu indicates spirituality and spiritual thoughts in leo navamsha there is no planet and in scorpio navamsha also there is not planet no planets right so 
only these signs the uh, sign of uh, scorpio in d1 having rahu the sign of gemini in d9 having moon and the sign of cancer in d9 having ketu is prominent and indicates the pending karma of swami vivekananda towards ramakrishna paramhans and the pending karma of ramakrishna paramhans towards swami vivekananda right so i'm um, just these are the four techniques that i wanted to talk about right and all these things are uh, you know uh, i have a forthcoming course by the name of parashar sutras which i am going to teach for almost 5 to 6 months i am planning the course to be of 5 months but if uh, uh, you know if if uh, uh, students want i am ready to give them 3 4 5 extra classes as well so 4 to 5 month uh, 5 to 6 month courses i am going to do on parashar sutras where i will be teaching breath parashar hora shastra the text now popular they know as bphs from end to end and the course will be very extensive beginner friendly it will start from complete basics of vedic astrology will teach about rashi planets house signs and after that will teach about everything of astrology that comes into bphs and uh, vedic astrology now is a synonymous of parashari astrology right so this is a full fledged course where i am covering everything from the basics of planets to raja yoga dasha transit ashtak varga sudra san chakra remedies timing events uh, right raja yoga dhana yoga and, all, and, the, and the major divisional charts and everything i am covering in this uh, parashar sutras course which is based on the bphs right it includes a lot of my researches and gives a lot of techniques to uh, and share a lot of techniques to students which makes their life easier enhances their ability and make them a better astrologer all and all if i have to summarize about the course it is a course which starts from complete basics and because it covers complete of bbhs after completing this course one can start practicing as an astrologer as the course covers complete uh, as the course covers the complete gamut of bphs and vedic astrology is a synonymous of parashari astrology right so i will uh, drop a script i will also drop a link to the uh, course page on in the description uh, box of the video so that you can just click on the link go to the product page and see what i am offering and teaching in the course also if you if you are interested in joining the course like you know, find out my number give me a call drop me a message or comment down below the video right thank you for watching the video and giving me your precious time please make sure to comment on how you like the content not like the content should i make more videos like this or not i will be awaiting your feedback many thanks